Hello chess friends and welcome to Azaros Chess Channel and welcome to the round 9 of the FIDE Chess.com Grand Swiss Tournament in 2019 in the Isle of Man. So uh, after 8 rounds this were the current standings, uh, really we have, we have a dynamic tournament, uh, Fabiano Caruana with 6 points, uh, Anton Guerrero David, uh, surprise, you see he's not even over 2700 uh, rated, so he's really I th the, the biggest surprise in this tournament, I wish him all of the best in the continuation of the tournament because we need uh, many many players uh, that are maybe uh, not so famous and uh, maybe can crush even some stronger grandmasters here Levan Aronian my favorite player uh, on the third place also with a very nice uh, score six points and you see Wang Hao we have Alexenko, uh, Magdaldu Parham, uh, Kovalev Vladislav uh, Carlson Magnus uh, so Magnus also with five and a half points today he played uh, with the white pieces against Fabiano Caruana, uh, the game ended in a draw, so nothing has changed. And also, Levan Aronian uh, played against uh, Anton Guaro David, he played also a draw. So, in this um, the top uh, three, three or four places, uh, nothing has changed, I think. Uh, but the tournament is still going on, the round nine is still going on. And today you see Hikaru Nakamura, before this round he had five and a half points, uh, he played against Vladislav Kovalev with the black pieces and he managed to win the game and joins now this uh, six and a half points club. So we'll see I think a very very dynamic tournament because in the last two rounds uh, players will have to play much more freely I think in order to win this tournament whoever uh, ha has the more guts uh, I think he will win this tournament because now it's time to play just simply for win the stakes are high because uh, as I said uh, the winner of the FIDE chess uh, tournament uh, this Swiss grand tournament uh, will be then uh, playing in this uh, candidates tournament which is an important thing to have the opportunity to play in this candidate tournament and then eventually challenge Magnus Carlsen for the throne. So, very nice game I think in this uh, Vladislav Kovalev against Hikaru Nakamura. Let's see the game. Uh, e4 here played by Kovalev. We have c5 by Nakamura. We have knight on f3 and now knight on c6. The Sicilian and uh, now the most often line that's played these days is this uh, Nezhmedinov attack with bishop on b5. This uh, idea comes, uh, of course, to doubling up pawns on, on c6 and create uh, a sort of a strategic weakness in your opponent's position. And if you have to go in this particular line, I don't recommend you here to play something like a6 because uh, White's idea was to uh, play anyway. Uh, bishop takes on c6 and after b, b takes on c6 you see again you have another pawn on a light square this bishop is a little bit blocked by its own pawn so again it's blocked out even by this pawn so you need many moves in order to improve that uh, the most often line now these days is to play this move g6 which Magnus Carlsen often played uh, in the world championship match uh, against Fabiano Caruana and here you see Vladislav Kovalev simply took bishop, bishop takes on c6 and we have b takes on c6. So you see we have accomplished uh, a similar position but at least we haven't played this uh, move a6. Uh, now it's a possibility here for, for white is to maybe uh, play bishop on a6 uh, to occupy this very important diagonal have uh, at least some kind of activity so in this bishop has still some uh, still some possibilities to get into the game but uh, this bishop on a6 it's not a common line uh, there are many lines now here castling played by Kovalev and now bishop on g7 by Nakamura uh, rook on uh, e1 with the preparation to play the move e5 this e5 move would be then blocking out this uh, dark square bishop and uh, although you see you can still play this bishop on a6 the rook gets out of this way of this diagonal so basically white's preparation here is to uh, make this both of these bishops useless but Hikaru Nakamura a great attacker I think one of the best tacticians these days it's not allowing these types of positions in which he, he cannot play with his bishops so at least if he gives them up at least uh, he'll make something happen with them and here he played a very very interesting idea which i like um knight on h6 this knight on h6 seems a little bit strange but it's really a great move i think because uh, also white's idea is to play c3 and d4 
uh, to create sort of a pawn storm in the center and uh, sometimes when you place your knight on f6 uh, then after potential c c3 d4 i just want you to imagine the position then also to play e5 and then uh, it comes with the tempo so far uh, now black has the possibility to challenge white center immediately with the move f5 this is very important because uh, you see after c3 white is uh, slowly but uh, here uh, slowly but it's really an aggressive way to dominate in the center with some pawn storms uh, so that's why here nakamura first castled and now we have uh, h3 this h3 is a prophylactic move here by uh, Kovalev because in some occasions you can try d6 and then bishop on g4 and this bishop on g4 would be attacking the knight so the knight is the supporter of this d4 pawn so if of course white plays this d4 so that's why here h3 also a perfect a perfect idea here by white and uh, here f5 a very nice move here by nakamura already playing his aggressive style that's why i like really nakamura's games uh, they are they're never boring i uh, i think and uh, here after f5 we have really a dynamic game e5 uh, passing through here by kovalev uh, he still stays with this idea to push the pawn on d4 and cement the center knight on f7 and here e6 doesn't bring you so much it's not such a good move because you can take although you have these two weak pawns uh, but you have a very very powerful center now after potential d4 now then c takes d4 we have c takes d4 and now c5 a very important move in this variation it would be because here after d takes c5 now simply queen on c7 and then try to advance this pawn e5 e4 bishop on e6 uh, rook on b8 uh, many attacking possibilities even with this knight you have good coordination uh, to change some directions of the attack so here after e5 and e4 i think uh, <coughs> with these bishops with such an open position black would be dominating on the board so that's why uh, here d4 was played and uh, as said after c takes d4 we have c takes d4 and now nakamura plays bishop on b7 of course with the preparation to play the move c5 and then liberate <coughs> this diagonal for the slight square bishop so these bishops um, now are on the best diagonals uh, but in order to make something out of it you have to open the center and here after knight on c3 nakamura plays immediately c5 uh, that's the difference between probably me and nakamura i would try something like preparing maybe rook on c8 and then to play c5 but not nakamura he plays very aggressively now in the center c5 perfect move and here after d takes c5 he sacrificed the pawn but now he gets what he wants uh, e6 and now he blocked out this center pawn storm this uh, pawns are immobile they cannot move forward and uh, here this pawn is a weakness and after queen on c7 <coughs> this pawn would be also weakness this uh, pawn on uh, pawn on e5 bishop on e3 played by kovalev and now you see very very nice attack here by uh, nakamura immediately uh, g uh, g5 now with the possibility to push even g g4 and this pawn would be then hanging so uh, here if you try something like knight on f3 after queen takes on f3 maybe also a good idea is to immediately take um, the, the the pawn on e5 but now uh, the dynamics of the games has a little bit changed uh, here after potential queen on e2 this pawn is now hard to attack uh, you see it's uh, only uh, defended by the bishop but you cannot participate with more attackers against this pawn and this uh, pawn is really creating this very important space advantage on the fifth rank and here after b4 a4 uh, b4 a4 and similar ideas so uh, white could create a pawn storm here on the queen side so g5 very very interesting idea here by nakamura staying with his bishops on the board and here uh, knight on h2 this was now uh, the main mistake i think by by kovalev in the position because he was probably from scared a little bit of this g4 possibilities uh, to kick away the knight uh, a better move would have been maybe to play now bishop on d4 cementing now this uh, pawns here in the center protecting here also this e5 pawn 
and uh, now we, we have still this space advantage on the fifth rank so in the continuation maybe h5 would be the best move here for nakamura then after potential c6 just in order to maybe liberate now the dark square bishop bishop takes on c6 and bishop on c5 it looks like a very very interesting idea there is also now a very very interesting line with g4 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 immediately uh, sacrificing the rook if you take the rook here then bishop on f8 and here after h takes g4 uh, knight on knight on d4 would be the continuation but now bishop on b7 and this would be really really an interesting game uh, black down the exchange but with very powerful bishops they can change really the direction here bishop on c5 then bishop on b6 aiming here and still what with the possibility to play something like f4 f3 or even g3 just in order to open the position maybe queen on g5 also very powerful gaining the queen also in the attack with this bishop pair and this uh, very nice defensive knight on f7 it would be really, really an interesting game so as said here knight on h2 played by kovalev um, in inaccuracy or in mistake you can call it like you want but uh, this was really a necessary move because now nakamura takes uh, this pawn without uh, any challenging by by white and now he has a perfect domination on the board with these two bishops so here bishop on d4 uh, played by kovalev and here nakamura plays a very nice tactic um, very nice positional tactic sort of uh, he plays bishop takes on h2 very nice and here after knight takes on h h2 we have queen on the c7 with the check king on g1 but now you see e5 and this was uh, really a great attack now so after e5 again white is f forced to do something bishop on e3 and you see f4 simply advancing the pawn bishop on c1 and you see the problems of white so the rooks are on the uh, uh, first rank the queen is still stuck on the uh, starting square the bishop is now on the starting square we have a pa very powerful bishop which is aiming on this g2 square and now uh, this knight on f7 you'll see the importance of this particular knight the knight is now a very nice defensive piece it cannot be attacked by a bishop maybe because uh, the position would be very good for white if white would have this life for bishop but this knight on f7 is basically unchallengeable and you see it controls uh, very powerful here this e5 and g5 pawns and uh, now with this f4 pawn we have possibilities to advance the pawn here on e4 of course it has to be more prepared but now if we just open the position here somehow for this slice for bishop or play something like king on h8 rook on g8 this would be very very dangerous for for vladislav kolar queen on c5 played by nakamura first of course with the preparation even to play now uh, the move d5 here queen uh, takes on d2 but now rook on b8 and now when all of the pieces of blacks are now in perfect attacking formation the rook uh, can also uh, create some attacks against this potential weak b2 pawn because in order to connect the rooks you have to play some somewhere with the bishop uh, like bishop on d2 then you're leaving this uh, b2 pawn hanging and let's see now this position from white's perspective i would never love to be here uh, white because you see this central pawn storm is very dangerous that uh, hikaru nakamura has played here and uh, although you have this uh, situation this two on one situation here on the queen side but it's uh, it would be only a good position if it would would be in an end game without maybe this rooks or, or this knights on the board without the queens on the board then white could create a distant pass pawn situation but uh, with so many pieces on the board it's basically a losing game because you cannot create a pass pawn it's too slow just simply to try something like a3 b4 uh, pushing forward this pawns it's uh, as i mentioned too slow and you cannot you cannot do that without losing some tempo so queen on g4 was played by uh, kovalev he tries to get the queen into the defense and now rook on d8 you see uh, it's now very easy for nakamura to find the best moves because he has to only occupy this open files semi-open files place the pieces on the best squares you see the queens the queen has good diagonal bishop has good diagonal rooks have a good good files knight is a good defensive piece as i mentioned perfect harmony here between the pieces and here again kovalev makes a slight inaccuracy with h4 tries to break the, the central pawn storm 
but uh, here maybe again a better idea is to play knight on e4 immediately try to <coughs> close the position and block this advanced pawns uh, simply to through a blocking system and uh, at least it comes with the tempo so you have to do something you have to maybe uh, give up your likes for bishop after rook takes on e4 but maybe uh, you can try something like f3 and create a blockade here after h4 at least again um, nakamura the opportunity to improve the position of his pieces and he played now very powerful rook on d3 this rook on d3 is also very dangerous because we can try some now something like f3 and push to uh, push the pawn forward or a more interesting idea is to play even rook on g3 you see how this h4 move was very dangerous by Kovalev. now rook on g3 comes with the attack you cannot take uh, you cannot take with the pawn this rook on g3 because um, your your queen is attacking the king so perfect attack here see with this h4 move uh, Kovalev again allowed um, uh, Nakamura to improve the position and now finally he had to close the position for the uh, for the bishop here after bishop takes on e4 rook takes on e4 but now uh, Nakamura has the opportunity to double up pawn so that's what he did he rook on d8 and now again the threat is to play something like rook on d1 so you see still it doesn't bring you so much if you take this immediately it's not a problem you still have some check problems here on the on on the first rank so here that's why Kovalev went back with the uh, with the rook rook on e1 was played and now queen on d4 creating a very powerful battery on the d file here a4 uh, this was sort of a desperate try maybe to play something like rook on a3 at least trade off one of these rooks and here nakamura simply continued to push rook on d1 we have queen on e2 but another problem uh, rook takes on e1 queen takes on e1 and again another problem because you see this bishop is really blocked out by this very nice pawn storm that uh, nakamura has created rook king on f1 and here queen on c2 was played with the preparation to play rook on rook on uh, d1 and you can uh, cannot prevent this idea you have to sacrifice the bishop bishop on f4 and here g takes f4 but in this position Vlad uh, vladislav kovalev simply resigned uh, this is completely winning for black with this piece up and uh, still uh, some attacking possibilities on the second rank uh, white is uh, simply lost okay uh, great great game by uh, hikaru nakamura as said this was really an interesting idea with this knight on h6 uh, with this f5 idea so very nice uh, counter attack against this nezmedinov attack uh, i'm i'll memorize this line uh, i haven't seen it so far that it was played in the top grand master level so Hakanu, uh, nakamura was probably prepared against uh, si uh, such um, attacking possibilities of whites and he deserved uh, to win this game and he also of course is now also sharing the top places on this very nice tournament and i wish him also the best in the continuation okay i hope you enjoyed this game meanwhile you can watch my other commented chess games from the series and you can also watch my best chess games of all time if you want to see the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and you can also watch my uh, commented chess games pl played by computers with some lila c0 stockfish and many many more and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content Thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course.